The Chicago Bears entered 1978 riding a six-game regular season win streak that had carried them into last year's playoffs. Early in 1978, Bear fans were backing the NFL's hottest team as the streak reached nine straight games, the longest in the league. Victories over St. Louis, San Francisco, and Detroit had brought the Bears a bright beginning, but new head coach Neil Armstrong was not smiling. With a wealth of playoff experience behind him, Armstrong realized the 3-0 record camouflaged the Bears' deficiencies, which would surface later. The Bears were showing their playoff form and beating the Cardinals and 49ers with fourth quarter rallies that are the mark of a win. But on a Monday night against Minnesota, Chicago's lack of big game experience began to show. The Bears were not strong enough to overcome playoff grizzled opponents and their own mistakes. The result was a torturous eight week slide of games that could have gone either way. But each week the Bears were learning, becoming more familiar with a new way of doing things. And by season's end, they were making it happen on defense, offense, and special teams. Their victory over Washington was the culmination of the season's second half that saw the Bears come within 12 points of a 7-1 finish. Through the hard times and fast finish, a Bear spirit emerged, and with it, a resolve to make it happen in 1979. The building of the 79 Bears began with the injury rehabilitation of number 48, pro bowler Alan Ellis, linebacker Wayman Bryant, and special teams captain Johnny Musa. Winners need depth to overcome season-ending injuries. Because of an injury, former free agent Dan Neal, number 52, proved himself as a starting center while waiver claim Terry Schmidt, number 44, and his 79, a season pro for the same reason. Another free agent, Gary Campbell, number 59, compiled 110 tackles, patrolling turf once the domain of outside linebacker Wayman Bryant. In fact, prospecting for free agent gems like Campbell has paid off handsomely for Chicago. Bruce Perrin, number 51, should challenge for a starting linebacker job. And safety Gary Fenzik, number 45, led the Bears in interceptions and tackles for the second straight year. The free agent ace on offense was wide receiver James Scott, number 89, one of pro football's premier deep threats. Mining the free agent load, Chicago has added many nuggets to its roster as the Bears dig for a championship payoff. In the trade market, too, teams sometimes strike gold. 
wide receiver Golden Richards was not a gift from Santa, but one of the bears by trade. In 1978, Richards had his best season as a pro, making all the catches, including the tough ones over the middle, where a wide receiver better have his eyes wide open. Also looking ahead to 1979, another traded for veteran, Greg Latter, has been the starting tight end for the past three seasons. Latter was originally drafted by the Colts as a linebacker and maintains a linebacker's combative traits. But tight ends get opportunities to repay debts due aggressive defensive backs. Backup tight end Mike Cobb, number 87, is an excellent blocker who was a Bengal number one draft pick in 1977. Trades also added quarterback Mike Phipps, number 15, who directed last year's fast finish. And defensive tackle Ron Rydolph, number 76, a proven pro. Former All-Pro Tommy Hart, number 53, came to the Bears from the 49ers and immediately upgraded the Bears' pass rush with polished individual skills. Only one bear had more sacks than Hart, and he came to Chicago through yet another process, the waiver system. Alan Page was waived by the Minnesota Vikings, who told him he was through. But Page knew he was not washed up, and his thoughts only hours after he was cut reveal the measure of the man. The only comment I have on uh, the justifications for what has happened to me is that in 12 years of professional football, I have struggled and worked very hard to maintain my self-pride and self-dignity. I know my abilities better than anybody. Um, I have no illusions about what I can or cannot do. I mean, none. And. Uh, when the time comes that those abilities are gone, I'll be the first to admit it. At this stage, I would think that uh, some team uh, in the league somewhere, and at, at, at this point, I don't know what team, but some team's going to get a very good football player out of the whole deal. The team was the Chicago Bears, and they did get a very good football player out of the deal. One with a unique outlook on the game he plays. A true professional with leadership qualities. The fans, they deserve and they have a right to see the best performance that I can give. And they pay money for that. And uh, for the past 12 years, I think uh, I've, I've always liked to think that uh, the efforts that I've made and the performance that I've given have been worth the price of admission. Alan Page never cheats his teammates either. The same qualities that made outside linebacker Doug Buffone number 55 special.
savvy is pro football's reward to its elder statesmen. But the 13-year veteran still makes the physical plays, too. The phone is a product of the draft's middle rounds, where most teams fill the bulk of their rosters. The Bears have done well in their talent hunt here, too, finding versatile linebacker number 58, Jerry Mockensturm, in the seventh round, and middle linebacker Tom Hicks, number 54, in the sixth. Defensive tackle Jim Osborne, number 68, a seventh-round selection, can quick rush a quarterback into a throwaway or an interception for the likes of Virgil Livers, number 24, a fourth-round pick who makes big plays. Number seven, Bob Avellini, a sixth-round pick, is a tough, strong quarterback who directed the last Bear playoff drive. Fifth round selection guard Reeve Sori has been all NFC, but on the Bear offensive line, the number one stands out. Tackles Ted Albrecht, number 64, Dennis Lick, number 70, and Lionel Antwine are all number one draft picks. They join trade acquisition Noah Jackson and free agent Dan Neal to form an offensive line capable of shouldering playoff hopes. All the Bears, including quarterback Vince Evans, number eight, depend on the line to make things happen at the line of scrimmage. Bear hopes for 79 and future seasons as well are anchored in the ambitions, talents, and depth of their offensive line with Jeff Seavey, Dan Jiggetts, and Mike Cobb providing excellent support for Ladder, Neal, Sori, and Jackson, and the number one, Antwine, Albrecht, and Lick. All blocked for another outstanding first round selection. In 1978, Walter Payton demonstrated another of his boundless talents, catching 50 passes. The Bear quarterback's favorite target. Any pass to Peyton is a long game threat, for his running ability brought him another NFC rushing title last year. In 1979, Peyton will be going for his fourth straight. In 1978, Peyton became the 30th NFL player to go over 5,000 yards rushing. Yes, there are 29 others, but only one did it in pure games. A guy by the name of Jimmy Brown. In 1978, defensive tackle Brad Shero was the team's first draft pick, though not selected until the third round. Defensive end Mike Hardenstein was a number two selection behind Peyton in 1975. 
and all-rookie selection that year as a left end. Last season, Hardenstein learned to rush from the right. How well did he learn? Watch that last play again. Shera proved to be a quick learner, too. Hardenstein has already fulfilled the high draft pick prophecy the Bears hope for Shera. But real draft surprises come in the late rounds. Number 57, Don Reeves, was not chosen until the 15th round, yet at one time started 23 straight games as the Bears' middle linebacker. Another 15th round selection, number 74, Jerry Myers, has starting experience. While a 12th round pick, Doug Plant, number 46, is a leader of one of football's toughest secondaries. Terry Schmidt, a waiver claim. Virgil Livers, a middle round draft selection. Gary Fensick, a free agent. And Doug Plant, a late draft choice, play well because they play together. Let one bear defensive back get trapped, and there's another bailing him out with a big hit. Special teams have a history of making it happen. As Neil Armstrong has said, their special teams are special because the players want to play on them. With Bob Thomas and Bob Parsons doing the kicking, and Steve Schubert, John Skabinski, Art Best, Wentford Gaines, Robin Earl and Lenny Waltershide the chasing, the Bears are exceptional in pinning the opposition deep in its own territory. A year ago, the Bears were among the league leaders with eight block kicks, one returned by Mike Spivey for a touchdown. With Schubert and Brian Bashnagel handling the more standard returns, special teams are indeed special to Bear fans. Roland Harper would have been a perfect special team performer, a 17th round draft pick known for his toughness. But Roland Harper is much more than that and the 79 Bears would do well to emulate his tenacity. Harper's exceptional 78 season did not go unnoticed as Chicago fans voted him their Pro Athlete of the Year. I think we were all hoping and hoping and praying that Roland Harper this year would wind up having gained at least a thousand yards. He missed by eight. And it seems sometimes as though he carried the Bears on his back. A truly gifted performer and a great athlete, and we're proud to present to Roland Harper, Athlete of the Year. The Chicago Bears are dedicated to building a championship team through whatever means are necessary. Whether it be finding an unknown like Roland Harper, giving a farmer all pro like Alan Page another shot, trading, signing free agents, 
or careful drafting, the Bears plan to make it happen. Basing it on this past season, I think our, um, our chances next year, our opportunities next year are just as good as anybody else's. We are, um, I think, as strong as all the other teams in our division. I don't know that we're um, as good as maybe a, a Dallas or Pittsburgh, but I think within our division, um, at this stage, we're just as good as the other teams. The NFC Central Division race in 1979 could be the league's most competitive. Defending champion Minnesota is still the team to beat. Last year, the Green Bay Packers were also a title threat and finished with the same record as Minnesota. The three-year-old Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat the Vikings once last season, as did the Detroit Lions. Any one of those teams, along with the Bears, can win the NFC Central Crown in 1979. The surest route to a championship title for Chicago is to defeat those division rivals. The hopes of Bear fans will be realized, and a division flag just might be flying over Chicago before too many more sunsets. For the Chicago Bears have the dedication to make it happen. Thank you.